you've become familiar with the properties of the most common controls in this session, but you've probably noticed that there are a few properties that are common to all controls. In this lesson, you'll look at some of the most common properties and learn what they do. To begin, open the My Project Sample File from your Sample Files folder. And open ControlsTest.aspx in Design View. Now add a label control to the page and set its ID to Label Test. Add a button control to the page and set its ID to Button Test. And add a calendar control to the page and set its ID to Calendar Test. Now you're going to change the font properties of your three controls. First, select your Label Control and set the Font Underline property to True. Now select the Button Control and set the button's font underline property to true. And finally, select the calendar control and set its font underline property to true. As you can see, this property has the same effect on each control. The font properties are available on all controls that contain text. Next, you're going to use the Visible property. All ASP.NET controls have the Visible property. If Visible is set to false, the HTML from the control is never sent to the user's web browser. Select the Calendar control and set its Visible property to false. Now view the page in your browser and you can see that the calendar control doesn't appear on the page. If you view the source of the page you can see that the calendar isn't just hidden. It is completely omitted from the page. Close your web browser now. And next, you're going to use the Height and Width properties. Almost every control has Height and Width properties that can be used to control their size. Select your button control and set its Width property to 150px. Now select the calendar control and set the width property to 10px. The calendar control only shrinks slightly. This is because it can't shrink smaller than the content inside it. If you were to reduce the font size property of the calendar control, it would shrink to a smaller size. Finally, you're going to use the CSS class property. When you set a control's styles using its properties, the web server automatically creates CSS code to display them on the page. It's more efficient and organized to keep your CSS in a different file and assign CSS classes to your controls. You can do this with almost every control by using the CSS class property. First, you're going to add a link to the site.css file in the Content folder. To do this, switch to Source View 
and then drag and drop the file from the content folder into the head tag. Now switch back to design view and you can see that the CSS file has taken effect and the page's colour and layout have changed. Next, select the label control and set its CSS class property to message error. Now select the button control and set its CSS class property to message error and do the same thing with the calendar control set its CSS class property to message error. The font becomes red and slightly larger when you apply the message error CSS class. You'll notice, however, that the text remains underlined. This is because any properties that you set on the controls themselves will override the styles set by CSS classes. Now remove all of the controls from the page and remove the reference to the CSS file. Now close Visual Studio, saving your changes if prompted. You've now completed Lesson 410. Use Common Properties.